What's up, everyone? And this is Next Level Thinking. What's up, everyone? This is another episode of Next Level Thinking, where we always take it to the next level and inspire you to do great things as your host, Chris Holmes, as always. But today I have a special guest by the name of Patrick Moore. Now, let the audience know a little bit about yourself. I like, can already see the basic facade. <laughs> so, go ahead and tell a little spill about yourself, though. All right. So, I'm, you know, I, I grew up here in Houston, Texas. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, a professional bodybuilder. Um, I wasn't always a bodybuilder. You know, I, I when I grew up, I had a love for basketball. Um, and so, I did that through high school, you know, and, and college. And, you know, I fell into boxing. You know, that was the, the last thing I was yeah. I was hate done. to take a hook from you. Yeah, man. It's, it's <laughs> only in the ring. Only in the ring. <laughs> So, um, you know, I did that, man, for some years. I loved it. You know, it was amazing because it was, you know, one of those sports or something that you put the work into and you're only going to get out what you put into it. You know what I mean? So um, once I stopped doing that, I was still in the gym. You know, so working out, being around weights was something that was just kind of like a normal. It came like something that you just do on a daily basis. You know, so it was was normal and natural that I would just, you know, stay in the gym because in transition it was like, okay, you're not going to box, you're not going to – Go to the NBA. I was too short for that. So you know, <laughs> yo, know, it's it's a being five eleven, man. It's like you, you, the NBA dude. You go in there. Those guys are like, like seven, yeah, man. Six yeah, foot point guards that are like six four. So you know, I quickly realized, man, that that I wasn't, you know, that wasn't gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So I stayed in the gym. I was still working out, and I ran into a guy um, out here on the north side at Twenty Four Hour Fitness, and and he was the one that first asked me, you know, was I interested in doing bodybuilding? And he was a big guy. He was. But he was a guy that was known, you know, at the gym. Like he, he just comes in, you like, oh, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, and he had the hat, 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 hat low, man. And and he was just, you know, you see him and you're like, okay, that guy's pretty serious. Yeah. And he asked me, man, he was like, you know, have you thought about competing? And people asked me, you know, and at first I didn't even know what that was. I was like, competing, what is that and why would I do it? And, man, uh, the next thing you know, he convinced me. He just asked me over and over. He would see me. So after him kind of badgering me for about maybe six, seven months, you know, <laughs> between that and, yeah. and my fiance was, you know, I was going to school personal training mm-hmm. at the time. So she was like, well, why don't you give it a try? You know, and, and people keep asking you, so maybe it's something there. So I, I gave it a shot, man, and um, I did my first show, and I placed in the top spot. So I was like, okay. This wasn't that bad, you know, getting up there in my underwear, you know. <laughs> I know that was yeah. probably not the most, uh, cause you know, <laughs> was, you know, like, hold up, okay, I know I'm in shape, yeah. but all these guys look at me, usually I'm just in the bathroom, you know, just doing my thing, yeah. you know, it's just me too, but it, now you have a whole judge panel and you just... Dude, it's, it's such a different dynamic because, you know, you, you think, and, and they're called posing trunks, so, posing you know, trunks. a lot of people wonder, like, I even oh, that, what do you call that, them? Yeah, <laughs> so it's posing trunks, man, and, and, you know, so doing that, and being completely exposed on the stage in front of a bunch of strangers, you know, it can be a little jarring, you know. But once you see that everybody else, like, especially when you're backstage, they're all the same. You know, you have the women backstage, the guys backstage, we're all together, you know. But, I mean, different areas. But so you kind of buy into the concept and then it, it calms you a little bit. So, you know, then when you go out on stage, of course, you're out there by yourself at first and then the rest join you later. Okay, so anyway, start. yeah, you know, I did that. I did real well on that show. Um, and then I was in then. I was like, the okay. Was kicked in. Yeah, so I, I got went back to the gym and I really started focusing on how to really build my body up. And, um, you know, I've been lifting, man. Like I said, the, the first time I picked up a weight with the intention of getting bigger, I was about 17, you know, so I kept it up. Mind. I already had my mind, you know, I wanted to be bigger. And then it just, it was a journey from there, man. It was not a quick thing, you know, it's I may, maybe gaining. Five six pounds a year. I mean, ton ton well, of food. You pretty much you know? check that off the list. Yeah. yeah, and and so you know when people are like, oh, five pounds, it's not a lot, but you know over a period of ten years, that's yeah, fifty yeah. pounds of muscle. You know, so that's gonna make you a pretty big human being, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, when it comes to like bodybuilding, is you know they think it's just like it's quick, and you can take something or, or do it's magic, and that's what makes you huge. That's not you know all my co-competitors, man. Here at the gym, I even have. Some you know guys that you know the the gym owner well he's a competitor so you know it's it's a lifestyle man and when you're around people that you know do the same thing you do it makes it easy so then you just fall into it man and you know it becomes second nature you know the gym is working out is what I do every day you right, know right. so now um, you know I work my way up through the amateur ranks so I made it to the pro ranks 
And man, it's you know now I'm trying to get the top spot in the world. Well, it's you like know, you so much up to it. Yeah. And before we go to our next time, I gotta ask like this. I feel like, especially when it comes to athletes or anybody's in the gym, do you feel like that's like your escape? Like when you get to the gym, like it's almost like home. It is, man. It's 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 like a quiet time, and um, you know, it's funny to say it's a quiet time because it's a noisy area, mm -hmm. you know. But you put your headphones on and you just zone out. And you know, if you had a tough day at work just tough day period with life, you know what I mean? The gym is where you can let that stress out if you have it. Um, because it should be something that you enjoy. You know, so when you work out, people that have done it for a while will tell you, you know, you start working out, those endorphins get going. You, you actually mentally, mentally feel yeah. good, good, you know, doing it. And then, so you, you, you do that, and then once you get a diet that's pretty good and your body starts to change, you know, you're, you're in it. But yeah, man, it's, it's definitely a stress reliever. You know, if you, you gotta clear your head, you know, you come in here and you exhaust the body, and then, you know, it's, it's like I said, man, it's your quiet time. If, if you're an athlete or, you know, bodybuilder, it's your craft. So, you know, you kind of, you know, give it a little bit different respect than your average person who just comes in here and do it because they feel like they this, should. Yeah. yeah, you know. Oh, shit. Let's see. Card full. <laughs> Still got the audio going on. You want to keep it going with the audio clip? I'll just put it with the clip. Gotcha. <clears throat> So even though we have technical difficulties, I know that audio is still going, but we're going to keep this apart. So um, with that said, uh, we're going to go into our next segment where we're going to go a little bit more into like the business details because I feel like a lot of people don't know the full and depth. So stay tuned for that and we'll actually have your video going. <laughs> Sounds good. What's up, everyone? We're back for the second segment. Uh, this time, we're going to go a little bit more into the business side of it because you, I was, I'm pretty sure we have like our own kind of idea, but we don't have, really have a true understanding of what really goes on you know, behind the scenes to you know, flow into it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, like I said, man, you know, I went to school of personal training, right? So that, that's what kind of started me being into the fitness industry. You know, so with that, of course, you're going to meet different people. Um, you know, whether it's your clients or you go to fitness expos or, you know, just whatever. I didn't even know they had fitness expos. Oh, yeah, man. They just had a big one at, at George R. Brown. It's an American fitness expo. I think it's, I want to say it's I'm the so second. I'm so mad because now that you mentioned that, I saw, like, pictures on Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, ah. So, but, you know, you, you pick which ones you go to, man, because some of them are great, some of them aren't. And so, you know, if you, you go attend things like that, then you make different connections with people. So, that's the business side of, you know, traveling, going to expos, because you do that. Um, you know, so being a bodybuilder, if you compete and you win shows, right, obviously you're going to get some attention mm -hmm. and, you know, eyes will be on you like, okay, what is he going to do next? What else is he doing? You know, so, you know, personal training, okay, that's one thing. So I do online coaching. So whether it's, you know, for competitors, bodybuilders, or just your general person that wants to get in shape or lose weight, you know, because mm -hmm. it's all the same thing. I tell people, everybody that comes in the gym is a bodybuilder. It's just how extreme, you know, you want to go. Like you put so, your mind to what level yeah, you, you, you want to go to. So if you're just one person, we the, our whole goal as a bodybuilder is to build muscle and drop fat. And that's not an easy thing to do, you know. The, the whole Easy said, but not easy yeah, done. And that's what people, because, you know, it requires tweaking food and tweaking your diet. And, and that's one yeah. thing that a lot of people don't want to hear. I got to give up this. Yeah. I got to slow yeah, down. Well, you tell somebody, <laughs> oh, you can't have Reese's, you can't have pizza, you know, like, you can't drink. What? And they're like, so no more happy hour? No, no, no more happy hour. Yeah, like, I was a gym. Ah. You know, so, but you, 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 you keep balance, you know, so you have, you can have your cheat meals and your cheat days where you, you know, are able to keep going because it's one of, you want to make it a lifestyle. So it's not something that you do temporary. A lot of people will do that. Oh, I just want to get in shape for the summer. Okay. Well, if you stop after the summer's over, then you'll be right back in January square, saying, square I want to get back right. For spring. A cycle. Just keep and it's a cycle. cycle. <laughs> yeah. Over so, you know, if you make it a balance and week to week, you know, you, you just set your goals to be better, your body will change. So you know, as a bodybuilder, we just focus more in on it year round because even in when we're not competing, they have shows all over the world, you know? So, uh, the professional ranks, of course, there's less shows cause it's just like anything else, you know, at NFL, NBA, then you get to professional ranks, you know, there's only so few athletes that make it there out of the whole world and everybody who plays basketball or football. Mm -hmm. So you compete, man, you go to the shows and what happens is you might land a sponsor, which I did with Labrador nutrition. So they're based out of Texas. 
you know, and the CEO of that company, Lee LeBron, he's an uh, ex bodybuilder. He's a pro bodybuilder. It, it, he's in his fifties, in amazing shape. You know what I mean? Oh, man. And um, it's kind of, um, so kind of funny. Kind of reminds me of Vince McMahon. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Feel like and what? that's how it is, and it's crazy because he's in way better shape than Vince McMahon. Oh, I man. mean, dude, when you see him, it, it's crazy because you're like, man, you know. But then it makes you realize that you know, age is just a number. Like he looks phenomenal. So. I landed a uh, sponsorship with them that ultimately ended up turning into an endorsement, um, you know, based on me doing well in bodybuilding. And, you know, because I go to shows and I go to the expos and I represent the company and you represent them in a positive light. Right. So then people are kind of drawn to you. And then when they're drawn to you, then you can probably expand your own brand. So me, when they whether how can I get in shape like you? OK, well, I do online coaching. So okay. here you go. And then so you do that. Right. And once you start getting some momentum there and, you know, you're making some money, so on and so forth, you start seeing, okay, well, what else can I advance what's in my life? What's the next big move? You know, yeah, what's the next big move? So for bodybuilders, what's the next big show? You win a big show, then you reach a bigger audience. So doing bodybuilding is like... It's like you're rising on your expectations. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're here. What's next? Like, what's next? Yeah, okay. that's how it goes. <laughs> it's like, man, you're, so you're an amateur, right? Everyone's an amateur when they start. And then you win a local or regional show, and then you qualify to go to a national show. Once you go to a national show, those are all the winners from the regional show. So, of course, it's tougher, you know, more competition. You win a national show, you get to turn pro, and you go into the pro ranks. And then, of course, it's even more competitive there. And then when you're pro, you're trying to get to Miss Olympia. So, the Miss Olympia is the most, it's the most prestigious award you can win in bodybuilding. It's the best bodybuilder on the planet because it's international federation of bodybuilders so it's not just the usa it's everywhere oh, the, the whole world yeah so all these guys the best of the best of the best come in for one show and so you win that you're the king you know what i mean and We're so crying, you know? <laughs> that's it yeah man you get the crown you get the big huge trophy you get the big check and then everything that you do from then on just Sponsors generates so revenue out of nowhere. that's what it is they come <laughs> in and and they hey can we sponsor you with this can we you get a food sponsor I mean, you get a sponsor that may pay for your travel, for your clothing. You're basically not paying for anything. Basically, yeah. And that's what you work for. You yeah, work to be able yeah. to just work out, eat, and sleep. And then, but I mean, like I said, you still have to do other things. So, you know, the current champion, he has clothing line. He just developed an app. So, you know, all these different things, man, you have to be able to explore different options. So it's definitely a big business side of it. You just have to be able to get out there and network and put yourself out there as someone that just doesn't lift weights because that's not all we do. I mean, this is lifting. I mean, you're in the gym in an hour and 20 minutes. That's it. Um, that's, that's so much more. It's a small part of it. Yeah, so it's easy to get in the gym. So then after that, you have to eat right. And then after that, you have to wake up and do your day-to-day. -day. For me, it's personal training. And then on top of that, I have to cook my food. So... You know, then I have my relationship, so I have to focus on, balance. you know, balance, you know, my fiance, she has to get her time too. So, you know, it, you have to be a person that's able to work hard and balance your life because it, it's, that's just how it is. got to make the future wife happy. You, you got to, yes. <laughs> dude, happy, happy wife, happy life, man, because when my girl's not happy, <laughs> everything, bro, yeah, dude, the, the workouts aren't the same because she's like at your neck and, you yeah, know, you so, yeah, man, you got to create that balance, A little man. bit of humor in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So with that, that's a tremendous amount of information that I was taking notes on the oh, man, you even know that. All right, so we're about to go into the next segment, or we'll go a little bit more inspiration. Uh, you, I guarantee you I have inspiration now, but now we're about to go even more in depth than that. So now we're going to the next segment. Welcome back. This is the last little segment, and this time we're going to focus a little bit more on inspiration. You know, all about you know next level thing and taking to that next level. But um, who are like the I guess top people to look up to when it comes to everything that you do in your daily life. Um, so you know, for me, I always try to look at the guys who have done what I'm looking to do, and you know, you want to try to take it a step further. So you know, just like next level, mm -hmm. you know, be. And for me, you know, I, I started the first th book I ever picked up, you know, with bodybuilding anyway, uh, was Educational Bodybuilder. You know, so Arnold Schwarzenegger, that was his book. And he actually had an interesting story. Yeah, 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 man. And so you know, he came from Austria. I mean, this guy wasn't even from you know the United States. Exactly. So he came over. You know, his family military, and you know, he he, you got to think this guy came over here with no, no family, no background, or anything, man, and actually created you know a whole sport almost, if if, if you will, because he kind of brought it to the forefront, you know. So when Arnold came over, you know, and he he. 
you know, did bodybuilding, right? And that's what he's known for. Then the next thing you know, he was Conan. And then the next thing you know, he was, you know, at Terminator. And then yeah. he was Predator. You know, and he, he and did all this. fun saying, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And, and that's what he did, man. It's, it's almost like this guy came over here from nothing and developed, uh, and, you know, an amazing lifestyle, you know, bodybuilding, then he went to acting, you know, then he even managed to make the governor. governor. That's yeah. like at that point, yeah. it's like when you see people do things like that, it's like, I have no excuse. Yeah, man, you know, so his, his book, man, he, you know, and in that book, he was talking about, you know, his family and his background, and um, when he came over here, he met with Joe and Ben Weider. They actually created the International Federation of Bodybuilders. Oh, and, um, you know, so he was under his wing, man, and he grew to be, you know, an icon in the sport. And then once he, came you know everybody else was like okay you know they started paying attention to bodybuilding because he was in he moved movies the brand. And, yeah he, like he brought himself. attention to it yeah so you know i followed his exercises because i was just starting to work out you know like i said i was young and um you just looked to you know who was doing it and uh, he even had a movie pumping iron and you know they revamped that and made generation iron and generation mm -hmm. iron too and generation iron had the mo modern day bodybuilders you know so in generation iron they had phil Heath. So he's the current Miss Olympia, seven years champ in a row. Seven times. Seven times. And <laughs> it's, just, it's crazy, man. You know his physique. His physique is next level. I mean, he was a Division One basketball I bet player. Was winning seven times. Yeah, man. And, and you know he loved basketball. I love basketball. And so you know he he did the same thing, man. He got into the sport, you know, after college, and you know he did real well. He started to rise to the top pretty quick, and you know. In the process of doing that, you know, he did, you know, workout videos. Um, well, you know, you can follow his workout videos, but he, um, you know, he landed a supplement deal, and then he won shows, and then he started doing other business ventures. He had DVDs he released um, that were movies that tracked his journey. Um, he has a clothing brand, you know, and just, you know, just business, you know, so. He's probably the number one because he's done it. He's done something that the guys before him didn't do. And, you know, when you were able to take it to the next level, man, and do other things, then that's, you know, that's the most inspiring thing, period. And then making the unseen actually possible in yeah. reality. And that's what it is, man, because, you know, you, and you have to surround yourself with people that are like-minded, that are doing, you know, what you want to do or have done it. So for him, it was um, Jay Cutler. He was a, the Miss Olympia before him. And, you know, he was champ for four years. So there's only been two other guys that have been, you know, eight years champ. And that's uh, Ronnie Coleman and Lee Haney. So Phil Heath will probably win eight this year, this September at the Miss Olympia. At two, then that's like two Super Bowl of bodybuilding. So, you know, he's, like I said, he developed an app. So he's done all these different things because there are ideas that I've had too. So he's going to be number one inspiration, man, because he was a guy that came from a basketball background. You know, no experience in bodybuilding. He just had a decent physique. And he's like going all in. Yeah, going all in. Once he did a show, he got bit by the bug. And then the next thing you know, you know, he's the top guy in the world. So, you know, it's super inspiring, man. So everything he does, you know, I'm, I'm watching and I'm looking at it and I'm trying to mimic that. So then when I'm able to do that, then I can look and say, okay, now I've done that. So what's next? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that those people, those guys, man, are the most inspiring because they've taken one thing and developed multiple you know, avenues to be successful. It wasn't just lifting. So, you know, that's what it is for me. And you keep on something very important too, is like, even though like you're growing, always stay open-minded to like different things because like, you never know how much further you can go if you just like venture out to the unknown. Yeah. Because you'd be like, I don't know, like, I took that leap. Yeah. You're like, I, you know, I'm glad I took that leap now because I didn't even know I could do that first. Exactly. And it paid off. Yeah, and that's what it was, man. It was me getting on stage you know, and and I wasn't sure about it. I'm like, I, I'm like, I can't do bodybuilding. Those guys are huge. Like, look at that. So it, it took me actually going out on a limb and, and doing it. Yeah, things. and then see it, and then have those guys tell me, hey, you're gonna be great. Like, man, you know, we can see it coming. And then you know, here we are a few years later. Those same guys, I, I see them, and they're pro guys. And they're like I told you, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. remember I told you back backstage at your first show. This guy Frank Robinson. He's a pro bodybuilder, and he told me, he pulled me to the side, and he said, man, you're going to be great. You know, you're going to do some amazing things, just watch and see. And, you know, that's what it was, man. And so now that I'm, you know, mastering bodybuilding, my eyes are on what can I do after the sport because I'm not always going to have this body. 
you know, it, I can push it as long as I can, but at the end of the day, think of what's left is your mind. Time. Yeah, man, so you got to think, well, what can I do after the sport is over? I'm never going to stop lifting. You know, as long as I'm not injured, I can keep lifting, I'm going to keep doing it. But after that, you have to think, okay, so what can I do? And you don't want to wait until you're done with the sport you to wanna figure do that it out. Now. Yeah, you want to figure that out now. So while you're active, while the iron is hot, while you're up and coming, you have to look to those other avenues as to why I'm going to do when the sport's over. And that's how you leave a legacy, man, with building a brand and, you know, what people remember you by, you know? Drop mic. <laughs> Drop mic. That's it, you know? So with all that great information, uh, where they, can they find you on the social platforms, website, and all that so they can stay in contact with you? So, man, you, you, can, you can, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. I'm not as active on Facebook as I should be, but on Facebook, it's just Patrick Moore. On Instagram, it's Patrick T. Moore, T in the middle, Tom, the T as in Tom. So I'm more, most active on Instagram, um, and you know you can reach me by email, Patrick T Moore eighty four at gmail dot com. Uh, that's where you can probably reach me about training questions. I give out information for free, so if you have any questions, general fitness or whatnot, don't be afraid to reach out or you know like I said, give me a follow. I put all my videos, my workouts and stuff on YouTube. Just type in Patrick Moore Bodybuilder, it'll probably pop up right at the top. Just click on my page and subscribe, and you'll see all the videos that I've done, different workouts, stuff like that. Talk about food and nutrition. So, you know, all those avenues, it's, it's pretty easy to reach. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for the tremendous amount of information, a lot of value out of that. And don't just sleep on this. Like, you know, take that and take action because that's what I'm doing with these podcasts. You know, so they can, making you see a relatable story so you can actually see it coming into your future. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and close this out. It's your host, Chris Soms with Next Level Thinking, and my special guest, Patrick Moore. Take it to the next level. Peace. Peace. Was good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.